Hello everybody, my name is Alesh Eisner and welcome to the Canadian Money Talk, the channel about Canadian investing and personal finance. Please like and subscribe. I record two videos per week, so make sure you ring the notification bell to get notified each time one comes out. Part of my monthly routine to get another source of cash flow is to use options, specifically selling put options for cash premiums. I sell them the first week of every month to expire six weeks later, the third Friday of the following month. I had the opportunity to present my process, including the live selling of the puts to a group, and I recorded it. The recording is split into two parts. I hope you will find this look over my shoulder informative. Please note that options are risky and should only be used by informed people. Also note that I have the resources available to take possession of the stocks should they be assigned to me, hence the large dollar amounts involved. If you do not have the cash available, you can either buy back the options, which I will explain in the video, sell the stock as soon as it is assigned to you, or use smaller dollar amounts, or just sell fewer options. This is part two, preceded by the general introduction. To see part one first, please click in the upper right corner. Uh, I'll go through the process really quickly, uh, talk about put options. Uh, I don't really know the level of experience of, of anybody, so I'll kind of give the basics so you can follow along. And we'll, we'll sort of go from there. Uh, I have, a I think, a very simple process of what I do. I do it every month. And uh, like I said, Thursday or Friday, first week of the month. Um, and so a put option is a contract a very automated one where the person who sells the contract or writes it is another word of another way of saying it uh they will end up uh having an obligation so i'm gonna go here to to here so this is the interactive broker screen um you can see the at the top here, those are the put options that I've sold previously. Uh, each brokerage will be different, obviously. Uh, these are expiring in roughly two weeks on December the 16th. We are going to be selling put options for uh, January, uh, expiring basically in six weeks, the third Friday of the month. So that's that's how I do it. You can see the position is showing as negative while regular stocks are showing as a positive and green while these are showing as negative. Uh, this is because I had sold for cash and you can see the cost basis here, how much I sold them for. Uh, I had sold myself an obligation. So they show up here because I have an obligation which I had already collected money for. And in the previous round, this added up to roughly uh, two grand. So I, I try to aim for about 2000 every um, every month. And so what it does is, uh, so for white cap resources, uh, the position shows as negative six. So that's six contracts and each contract is 100 shares. So 600 shares of white cap. And what I did is I sold the promise to purchase uh, these 600 shares of, um, of white cap uh, for $10, okay? And if, if the shares go up and they stay above $10, then this will expire on December the 16th and my obligation is gone and I will have gotten the $287 right up front. Uh, if the shares go down at below $10, the person uh, who purchased them uh, is able to, to sell me their shares uh, for $10 even if at the time they are 9 or 8 or 7 or what have you. 
Uh, so basically I'm selling insurance. We can kind of think of it that way. And uh, so so that's that's one thing. Now the uh, somebody had asked yesterday during the live how the premium or the market value of an option is determined. And it really depends on three things. The primary thing is uh, how far away the strike price, which in our example is ten dollars, how far away that that price on the contract is from the current value of the shares. And uh, so so that's one. The other thing is how long before the expiry. So the reason I do it on the first Thursday or Friday of the month is because about six weeks out is when the the time value of the option really starts falling. So the time value is basically how much time is left for white caps price to drop under ten dollars. When it's uh, when it's under ten dollars in our example, that's called being in the money. If it is above ten dollars, then it is uh, the the phrase is out of the money. Okay, so I'll I'll start using that from from here on out. If it's under the puts strike price, then it's in the money. If it is uh, above, then it is out of the money. And by the way, if you have any questions throughout this process, please you know unmute yourself and just ask me. Uh, this is for you. Uh, I'm just kind of having you. Kind of look over my shoulder and um <clears throat> so so that's uh that's kind of the second thing is how much time is left for the stock to to be in the money that's what the person who bought the put is looking for is for it to be underneath the the strike price me obviously i'm thinking i'm hoping that it's going to go up okay and then the third thing is how volatile is the stock? Uh, is it moving a lot or little? And that will also play a, a large part in how much the the uh, the option is worth. Because if the stock moves a lot, then there's a good chance that within those six remaining weeks, it's going to be in the money. Does that sort of make sense? Right, the 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 options are basically a, a, a an, an insurance contract where somebody who has the shares is thinking, well, I don't want to sell the shares outright, but I don't, I I sort of want to protect myself from the shares going down. So they buy the puts, I sell them. They're saying, I think it's going to go down, and I'm saying I think it's going to go up. So for the next six weeks it's it's not really an investment it's a speculation it, it, i wouldn't call it investing because six weeks is too short a time frame um so that's the basis of this uh where i'm selling insurance for cash right up front and so my process is that i sell these puts on stocks that i already have that i would theoretically be willing to get more of and if the, so I get some cash right up front and if the shares do go down, then I'll take possession of the stock. Um, so now you can see here, um, so for white cap, for example, so I sold it uh, about a month ago, I sold it for $287, the promise to, to buy 600 shares at 10 bucks. And white cap has gone up so and and of course time has expired as well so that's the second factor and so today the market value of those same six uh contracts is 56 dollars. so i'm i'm green over here um in a rising market you can you it it ends up positive so enbridge for example i sold them for 129 dollars now they're worth 10. So if I was afraid of Enbridge doing something unforeseen, I could actually 
pay $10.68 and I could get out of this obligation. So that's kind of the, the other thing. One, uh, they could expire worthless. Two, I could get the shares. Or three, I could buy back the contract at the current market price. Um, and so like you can see with some of these, the, the market is basically thinking there's very little chance of, um, of it being in the money uh, in the next two weeks. So that's kind of how that works. It's, I, I can't see anybody, by the way, when I'm sharing the screen, but uh, everybody's sort of okay with, with the concept there. Yeah, okay. So far, so far, so good. Please do interrupt me with any questions, right? If you're, um, if you're not getting it, then, then let's, let's resolve that. So the only one for, for December that I'm sort of in trouble with is, uh, Northland power, which the strike price is $39. And I think right now they're about 37 and change. And so that, that is in the money. And uh, I could get out of it if I paid $597. Um, but I'm just as happy to, to, to see what happens in the next two weeks and then take possession of the shares. Uh, so my overall strategy here is I do this on stocks that I already own, like I mentioned. And if... Uh, if I get the shares, I'm happy because if I had bought the shares outright uh, and they went down a little bit, like Northland Power did in, in this case, then I, I would still keep them. So this way I collected $500 and I get shares that, that I would have bought, let's say they were, you know, 40 bucks at the time that I bought them. Um, that, sorry, they were 40 bucks at the time that I sold the put for, uh, at 39 strike. And so I would have been, uh, uh, I would have been okay buying it at 40 bucks and having it go down to, to 37. This way I got $500 cash up front. And, it, and if I'm forced to buy something that's worth 37 and I'm forced to buy it at 39, it's fine. Just sort of my long-term thinking. Okay, so so here's some of the tools that I use. So that's that's kind of the high level strategy. Uh, let me actually touch before I go on. Uh, let me touch on a couple of the downsides. So one is if the share price goes up, uh, the put expires worthless. Mm, nothing bad happens. I would have gotten the cash up front, so no problem. But I don't get the shares. And I also, I miss out on any upside. Um, so if I had bought the shares outright and they went up, I would have benefited. By selling the put, I got cash, but I'm, I'm not benefiting in the shares going up. So that's one. And if I really love the shares, then I'm not going to get them. So I make myself feel better that I'm doing this on shares that I already own. And so if they go up, I am benefiting because of stuff that I've, that I'm already holding. The other downside I've sort of uh, touched on already, if the shares go down, I am paying more than the market price. Uh, it, like I said, if I had bought the stock outright and it went down, I would have held on to it. So I would have been in the exact same position. So I don't really mind it uh, from, from that perspective either. So, uh, for me, this is a way to number one, collect some extra cash and number two, get cheap shares. And so this is playing into my long-term, uh, investor philosophy that I am buying cheap shares. Okay. So that's, that's the strategy. Very simple, definitely some downsides. Uh, let me, uh, show you here. So I do have a tracking spreadsheet. Um, and so going back to 
middle of 2020. Uh, so first column is when I sold it. Here's the expiry date. Okay. And here is how much I'm, I'm at risk for. So with, with white cap, what I was doing is I I was on the hook for 600 shares at 10 bucks. So $6,000 is my uh, is my um, exposure. So that goes into here. Uh, here's the here's the premiums that I've collected. Okay. Um, but looking at column K, when you annualize it, this is the return. So basically in six weeks, uh, when you annualize, uh, so for example, this one, $255 was the premium I collected. Uh, for six weeks, I'm on the hook for $4,500. When you annualize that, that is worth, uh, that is 45% return annual. So that to me is quite nice. Um, and keep in mind, I don't actually have to take possession of the shares. All I have to do is, is pay, is pay this price, the market value, and I can get out of it and I can buy it back. So, um, you know, you're getting some very hefty returns. Um, the ones that have super hefty returns is usually because they're very volatile and then you can see that I, I end up taking uh, A means assigned, meaning I ended up getting the shares. Um, you know, as you're looking through 2020, as the market was going up, I got a lot of expiring worthless. Um, so that was good. And then just to show you kind of the bad side of it, uh, back in June, you know, four months ago, uh, because of the the downturn in the market and the bottom, I got a I pretty much ended up taking possession on everything, with the exception of one down here that expired worthless. Um, so so that is what can happen. Um, but then, the stuff that was expiring in November, uh, it all expired worthless. So, to me, I just keep doing this methodically. Uh, month after month and i know with a rising market that as long as i keep selling the puts underneath the uh, the market as it's going up over the long run it's going they're gonna expire worthless more often than not so far my record where's my record so far my record is um 68 percent is the percentage that I'm expiring worthless. Uh, it used to be three quarters, it used to be 75%, um, but it is, it is uh, it was affected by, by what happened in June, kind of this year. But uh, my my thing is that in, in an upward trending market, it's, uh, it's going to, um, to, be, um, to be positive. Uh, over those two and a half years, I, I collected forty-four grand in premiums, uh, and I cash flowed fifteen thousand. So I basically give myself a negative. If um, if I sold a, a put and I ended up getting the stock, and I got the stock for less than it was worth, I put that as a negative for myself. Um, like I said, it's sort of a paper loss, but in order to know whether whether this is effective or not, I, I sort of need to track it. Now, um, let me find one here. Okay. Uh, what what happens is sometimes you can get the stock and you still end up being positive because. Uh, because of the premium that you receive. So here's one. So this was, um, so EFN, Enter Plus, I believe. Uh, I promised to buy it for $7,000. 
and it was just in a money by, by like a couple of pennies. So I ended up uh, buying it for 600 and sorry, 6,950. Uh, Q trade, of course, charged me $55, but because up front I had collected $236, I still ended up being positive on it. So that occasionally happens that, um, you, you get, uh, with the cash you collect, collect up front, you get a buffer. Okay. Um, occasionally. Oh, here's another one. So I promised 10,200. I got it uh, when it was worth 10,080. And so I ended up still getting 76 bucks positive. Um, so anyways, uh, so I do that. So, um, any, any questions? Does that all sort of make sense or, or, uh, any, any puzzle looks out there? Okay. So, so what I do is, uh, there's a, uh, there's a, a website and an organization out there called options play. And they deal with options trading. They sell courses and they sell subscriptions to a very nice tool. Now, two and a half years ago, I happened to get in on the free Canadian version. Uh, you have to pay for US version. So I only have access to you to Canadian stocks, which is actually all that I ever wanted to do anyway. So this worked out perfectly for me. I I don't know whether you can still get a free version for Canadians. Uh, mine seems to be grandfathered, and so I'm um, I'm very excited to keep using it. Uh, so I'll show you that in a sec. But one of the things they put out, and I'm going to refresh this. Oh, maybe it refreshed. Okay. So what they do is just they calculate. Um, they calculate automatically and populate the spreadsheet. And so options play optimal uh, put report. Okay. And so they give you an annualized return if, if you use these. And basically what they calculate is um, they, they give you a strike price. They give you an expiry. So it looks like we're going to be doing January 20th. Uh, for the for the most part and I use this sort of as a as a guideline and I'll show you what I do um, So they give you the strike price that is going to sort of maximize your return um, You can see the implied volatility when I said uh, volatility was one of the things that determines uh, the premium that you can get uh, You'll notice sort of this volatility inching down as well as the annualized return, right? Like the ones at the beginning are just ridiculous like I wouldn't touch them. I think they're they're probably wheat stocks anyways. Um, but so what I do is I created myself a little spreadsheet and I copy this into my spreadsheet. So on on the left is my stocks. Here is the ones they're recommending. And then I just have a formula that says, look in column A for the value in column C. And if there, if it exists, tell me. And so, okay, next stock. Um, I Can I ask you a quick question, Palish? Of course. Um, uh, are you able to do this with the... Uh... ETFs. I know you're not an ETF guy, but uh, are you able to do it with ETFs and mutual funds and like different, or is it all stocks? Because I've, I've tried to do it on my platform mm. and it'll let me do it for stocks, but it doesn't seem to allow me to do it for ETFs and things like that. Uh, definitely not mutual funds, but ETFs you should be able to. Okay. Uh, ETFs do have options. So if I go in here, XIU, which is. Uh, which is a TSX 60. Uh, that definitely has uh, has options on it. Um, okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not um, not a mutual funds, definitely. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. So it's just the, your platform, maybe. OK, I'll check in with them. Thanks. Right. Uh, where were we? Uh, IGM, so that's an insurance company. IGM Financial. Uh, pays 5.6%. The cash flow, yeah, again, one and a half times covers the dividend. Uh, what do our friendly neighborhood experts say? Uh, sort of half and half. PE is 10, so I'm good with that. Um, what does Morningstar think? So 39 bucks. Uh, they think the fair value is 42, so that's not terribly encouraging. And Desjardins, which is usually more optimistic, says 53. Uh, but in the long run, they think everything is going to go badly. Okay. So not not feeling the uh, the love there. What do you guys think here? Okay. So they're they're a little bit more optimistic from a technical point of view, right? Very different. Um and they're giving it an eight out of ten historically, like it's done quite well over the last couple of months. Um, by the way, welcome to December. I get to put my tree up. Uh, okay. So I'm going to say no. And what did you guys? IGM 39. So again, more aggressive. Uh, modify and thirty nine. So yeah, the the usual fifty fifty. Um, but seventeen percent annualized, at least the way it is now. So IGM. Let's uh, let's give it a quick look here. Obviously, I do hold it. I just okay. <laughs> so the first guy is saying sell. <laughs> so that may not be. Uh, I'm looking at it. IGM. Uh, I'm looking at it from a long term perspective. Why isn't this okay? Here we go. Uh, obviously in the six weeks, the put could expire worthless and I'm still good. Okay. He's, he's unhappy about asset managers in general. Okay. This, another guy likes the management investment management sector. So two guys for this guy prefers a different one. But that was two years ago, two and a half years ago. Okay. Um, GM. This is a new one, by the way. Like this. Oh, okay, that that one's heading up today, so this is going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, IGM usually doesn't show up here. So that one's looking towards overbought. It's at 63 and 70 is when it's overbought. Um, okay. Like I, I don't mind the expert opinions if, if I happen to get it, whether I want it. Uh, obviously in the six weeks, anything could happen and it could still expire worthless and there's no problem. Okay. Uh, so historically we got 
positive and positive, but nothing strong. I I made the uh, the color coding here that if it's strong, positive or negative, that it gets a color. You know, sixteen to eleven, so it's sort of lukewarm, and fourteen to thirteen, I don't think has any significance at all. Um, but November had a, a strong historical. And then whatever month this is had a strong negative. So I, I sort of look at it that way. So um, the, the, the question then remains whether, whether this trend will continue. What was the number again? 39. Uh, so, I mean, it looks like it's been bouncing here for about three weeks almost. Uh, so, I mean, it, it could keep going up. Nobody knows. Um, now, is there... There's no earnings date. Let's, let's do a little bit. Let's do a little bit. Um, So I'm just going to do one contract. Um, and we're going to, well, let's, let's see. Uh, so let's try 38 divided by the $39 times 365 divided by 50. That doesn't sound right. IGM. Okay, I was expecting somewhere in the 20s. Is this thing up a lot today? Yeah, okay. Did I do that right? Yeah. Okay, I'm not bothering for 7%. I'm not doing that. I think because it had a... Okay, that's kind of surprising that it did that. 39. Oh, oh, December 16th. I screwed that up. <laughs> I, I didn't um, I didn't move it to 50 days so you can see the uh, you can see the uh, the time value part right uh, yeah this this is more like it here so let's do dollar five uh, divided by 39 times 365 divided by the 50. So yeah, we're hopefully gonna get twenty percent, give or take. Um, oh, 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 oh. See, it remembered the previous one, so I'm gonna have to close that off. Uh, it's a sell. January twentieth, and uh, thirty nine. I'm I'm debating whether to do one or two contracts. Um, the dividend I feel fairly safe with. Uh, it's sort of bouncing around. Yeah, let's do two. Glory to the brave. Um, so I'm going to do... And it's also heading upwards today, so I may not have much luck. Um, I'll just do, I'll do a dollar. What did I say with the calculation? Dollar five? Yeah, dollar five. Let's do dollar five. Okay. Uh, it's a sell. And I'm going to be on the hook for 7,800. Nothing? Nope. Okay. 
All right, let's uh, let's fiddle with these. Um, like I said, I prefer a, a downward trending market for for the day. Uh, well, this one still seems viable. Uh, okay. See, but as it trended downwards, if I initially, if I went lower, I would have already sold it. And here I'm sort of following the market and I may never sell it. Okay, whatever. I'm hoping for that positive ding and it's not, uh, it's not happening for me. Uh, in house west shore here all right i'll i'll bring that down okay um so so far i've only sold like 2200 worth so uh i i i want to get to at least f sorry 22000 worth i want to get to at least um 40 grand so I, I either need to, to adjust these or keep going. So I'm just going to keep going. Um, EFN. Uh, Element Fleet Management. So they're a logistics company. They trucking fleet, all that. Them I do like. Um, the dividend is a little bit on the low side, but overall there's a growth to it uh let's see what my friends over here say from a more technical point of view uh everybody's happy efn 19 bucks they're saying I'm not going to bother doing this. It, it always sort of comes out the same. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing the uh, RSI. So EFN. The company used to be called something a little, a little different previously. Uh, well, EF. Yeah, I, I forget the M. So, okay. So that's not bad. By the way, uh, I usually like to wait at least an hour after the market opens before doing this. I, you know, today we started an hour and a half after the market opened. Um, because at the beginning, there's a lot of volatility and weird things can happen. So things sort of settle down and I mean, they're still moving, but um, yeah, I wouldn't do it in the first half hour or the last half hour. So we're going to do options. Um, January expiry. And we said 19. What are we going to get here? Uh, if we get 57, let's say. Divided by 19 times 365 divided by the 50. So we're going to get 20%. Okay, sell January. Um, 19, let's do four of them, about eight grand worth, a little bit under. Uh, and pick, I'll do 56. No, really? Okay. Well, 55 it is. I'm probably going to get this right off the bat. Yep. Uh, okay. So now we're up to about 30 grand. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. All right, let's see if anything else is, is good here. And then I'll just fiddle with the existing prices. Sometimes I'll I'll change the prices, you know, uh, maybe in another hour 
and then I'll I'll leave it and I'll just let them expire uh, at the end of the day. Bam. Bam. Uh, everybody loves this thing. I I own some of it. Um. Yeah. How is it doing for the day? Yeah, it's all trending upward still. Um, it's It doesn't pay much of a dividend. Again, uh, my goal is not to get it, right? One right at the top. Um, bullish. Bullish 9 out of 10. All right, let's give it a try. Everybody sings its praises. Um, okay. There we go. So 50 days out. What were they suggesting here? 62 bucks. Uh, so we're going to do, let's say we get it for $2. So 2 divided by 62 times 365 divided by 50. So yeah, still in the 20s. Um, okay, let's see what we get in here. So sell 62. I'm just going to do one. I don't want to do 12,000. I just want to do 6,200. Uh, we'll put in what, 205. Um, January, yes. And got it right away. All right. Uh, so double check here. So we're 6,200, 14, 22, 30, 36. Okay. I'm gonna, let's try one more time. I'll, I'll I, I hadn't adjusted the IGM yet. Um, if I, yeah, th this will sell immediately because it's on the lower end. Oh, I lied. Well, see that, that moved now. Now $1 is right in between them. Uh, okay. Anyways. Uh, and what about you? Well, we're still in the running. This will sell immediately. Of course, I already just said that and didn't. Okay, I'm sure this will sell. Okay. Uh, an Algonquin? What, what's up with you? Okay, come on. There you go. Okay. So yeah, with the limits, you sort of have to ease into it. Uh, in Canadian. If, if we do, um, let's do Royal Bank. Or, no, it's RY. What am I doing? Uh... I'm I'm not going to do it. I just want to show you the um so if I look at and you can see way more frequent uh, uh um expiry dates. Well, okay, they have fairly big spreads as well. Okay, I lied.
well, okay, as a percentage, it's not that big, but um, okay. So let's do let's do one more, and we'll we'll call it a day, I think. Um, go back here. So we did BAM. Okay, Pembina pipelines. I think I've got enough oil related stuff. Savaria, I don't mind. Uh, Savaria is uh, they they do stuff for uh, like chairlifts and and converting cars for uh, wheelchairs and stuff like that. Uh, so for uh, elderly folks that need assistance. Um, again, please do your own uh analysis of the stocks so the dividends sort of coming up the payout ratio is the first thing that sort of scares me there let's check the cash flow uh 52 cents cash flow is is actually more than twice so there doesn't seem to be danger of it getting cut um yes i Yes. I don't know why I always want to say it with a vampire accent. Uh, so positive Savaria. Uh, so positive uh, outlook, bullish, relative strength 10 out of 10. And our spreadsheet was suggesting whoop, somewhere else. Uh, 15 and a half. 15 and a half uh okay so it's right right there hmm toronto i uh, positive outlook from the analysts on savaria by the way seven buys so that makes me feel a little bit better let's see what morningstar says Obviously, I already hold it, so, you know, uh, so Desjardins is saying 21 bucks, uh, so some upside, bit of a moat, bit of, they, they have a bit of a competitive advantage, I guess, some expertise in doing what they're doing, so this is good, um, upward trending today, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, getting close. Okay, so that's not making me feel good. So remember, anything over 70 for the RSI is oversold, and it's at 71. Um, hmm. That did not make me feel better. Again, worst case scenario, I get the stock but I'd rather have it expire worthless, right? Uh, download. Let's take a look at the history. Crow. Okay. Positive in December, very negative in January. Okay, I'm going to leave that one. I'm going to leave that one. Next. This is a, kind of a smaller Alimentation Kushtard. Parkland, they, they run gas stations. They have a, a single oil refinery. Uh, I'm, I'm in for Ma uh, Mullen. I'm in for Mullen. A uh, trucking company. They pay a very nice dividend, uh, no no moat, unfortunately, but I do own them already, as I said. Uh, generally positive, nice yield, decent payout ratio, so wouldn't mind getting more of that. Uh, where am I here? Uh, 72 cents, and their cash flow just super, more than three times. Uh, what do you guys think here? Uh, 
positive, positive. Okay. Uh, I attended their earnings call uh, and uh, their CEO was very, very honest. <laughs> Probably more honest than he should have been. <laughs> uh, okay, we're up today. It, it doesn't matter if they're up on the day or down on the day, but from the point when you sell or try to sell the option, the movement after that will either get you out of the range or will automatically trigger it. Um, so they're near oversold as well. Hmm. Okay. So that didn't make me feel great. And download. And open. And macros. Come on. Okay. Scroll, scroll, scroll. So positive in December and then slightly negative in, uh, in January. Okay. And what was the price again? Or not again, I hadn't looked at it yet. 15 bucks. They've come up a little bit. I've sold puts on it lower down. Uh, so there's Mullen options, 50 days, 15. See, so you can see they're not very liquid um, because the spread is like 40% of the uh, of the lower one. So, uh, so let's say we go at 35 divided by 15, oh, 17%, uh, 50 days out. And uh, so I'm going to do what, four, four of them, four times 15 is going to be 6,000. And we're going to try, let's try 40 cents. Can I, oh, I can go buy pennies. Okay, cool. Uh, I have no idea what determines that or, or what uh, I think. I think if you're in the dollars, then you can only go in in uh, multiples of five cents. But if you're maybe in the pennies, you can go buy pennies. So uh, January, it's a sell, uh, 37, and I'll go 36. It looked like it was moving up. Uh, and I'm going to submit that. And, and, and nothing. Okay. All right. So I think that's about as much as I did. One of these get, yeah, yeah. This one, no, which one got filled then? The AQN 942, my time got filled, right? The one we started out with it, it finally. So sometimes when you leave them, uh, either the computer or whoever will change their mind and say, ah, sure, let's do it. Or more likely the stock has moved. And so just for, for, for fun, I didn't even notice it. Um, yeah, it maybe took a bit of a downturn. So that's why that ended up selling. Uh, okay. So let's, let's do the math here again. So six grand, 14, uh, 20, 22, 30, 36, 41. 
So I'm, I'm sort of okay now. Uh, out of these, I probably feel the best about Mullen. Uh, followed by IGM. Followed by West Shore. So I'm gonna bring Mullen down a tiny bit. No? Okay. Um, IGM will bring down a tiny bit. Yeah, see? Okay, so it's in the dollars and that goes in five cents. But but if I switch it down, then that's going to be what what they're offering. And so that'll, I'll get that one automatically. Uh, since I don't feel that strongly about it, I'm going to cancel this. Uh, and see if somebody will take me up on the dollar and I'm just going to leave it. If it happens, great. If not, I don't feel that strongly about the stock. Um, and West Shore, let's check in on that. Uh, that one, that one, I'm on the lower end of the range. Like what, uh, what gives there? Okay. So all of them, I'm just going to leave. Um, the market has three hours till it closes. Uh, so I sort of did my quota. Uh, as far as, uh, money, we're at what? 645, 945, some about 1700, give or take. So not a bad haul. Uh, and we'll see what, uh, what actually happens. So... I, I'm sort of uh, I'm sort of gonna leave it here. I might check in on it in a couple hours but, uh, on the three remaining, uh, but otherwise I'm gonna sort of call it a, a day. Any any questions while I've got all of this screen sharing up and and everything's up and running? Anything you guys want me to look at or check in on? Questions? I'm I'm hoping I haven't been talking to myself. Oh, hi, Alish. Um, I think this is great. I, I love your process. Um, I'm just, I have a question about your cash flow. Um, I mean, if you have a strike or a success rate of like 65 or 75 percent, it means obviously every month or over the course of the year, you're reinvesting quite a bit. Are you just drawing the cash off your dividends and using this as a method to reinvest? Yeah, so excellent question. Uh, so when you look at my uh, tracking spreadsheet, uh, I'm, I am doing this for, for cash flow. Uh, you know, the average might be 50 grand a month, right? So that's 600,000, uh, a, a year. I can't swing that. Uh, yeah. so, so far I've been doing it on margin and then every year I've sold a U.S. Uh, real estate property, uh, and then paid off the debt. Uh, hopefully in January or February, I'm going to sell the last one. And what will need to start happening at that point is I'll need to, to tone this down significantly because I, I can't swing it and I don't want to get into debt that I can't pay off within a year. Uh, so, so very good question. Like you take a typical, uh, you know, let's take the, uh, the April here. Uh, so that was 55 grand, almost 56. So yeah, I can't, I can't do that. So what I'm going to start doing, and I did that very infrequently is I'm going to end up buying it back, uh, and then just take the loss. So, um, I, and I showed you guys uh, at the beginning, but if you look at the portfolio, um, yeah, you can see the ones that I did today, uh, are already in there. And because of the spread between the, the bid and the ask, I'm already negative on, uh, on a lot of these. Uh, but so for example, if I really didn't want Northland power, uh, I could, maybe I wouldn't have to pay the entire 632. Maybe I could ease, ease into it again from the other side and maybe be able to buy it back for 590 or something. Uh, but then I would have lost a hundred bucks because I, I sold it for 495. And if I buy it back for 590, 
but I was wrong on the direction. And if I don't want the stock or if I can't afford it, then uh, yeah, uh, my success rate up until the uh, the the very bad June of this year, where where I ended up getting a whole bunch of stuff, my success rate was in the high seventies, and it it really came down uh, as a result of that. So now I th what was I sixty eight percent? So yeah, very valid question. Yeah. Okay. So you can just buy them back and uh, take the small loss, and as long as you're in the high seventies, then generally you still make money every month. Yeah, so what I like to do, and, and remember uh, some of this is paper losses, right? It's just, I paid more for a stock than it was worth at the time, but that's where my uh, cost base is as well. So if I sell it right away, I actually end up uh, having a capital loss. But so, so what I end up doing is, I'm gonna have to make this a bit smaller. Um, what I like to do is for a given expiry date, okay, these ones are all mixed. Uh, for a given expiry date, I go over here and I, here, okay. So I add them up and I ended up getting two stocks, uh, which I was negative on. But remember, I could also, as soon as I get the stock, I could turn around and just sell it right and just sell the stock immediately as well. So that's a, that's another way of, of kind of terminating the whole thing. Uh, but so I, I made $1,300 when you include the losses from uh, getting it at a, a higher price than it was currently and uh, counting in the cash that I received. So so what I like to do is, you know, let's, let's look at January. Well, okay, that, that one's a foregone conclusion. That was all positive. Um, you know, you look at May here, so, no, that was five. So that one I'm $569 positive on, even though I ended up getting one stock. I did have to come up with the money for the stock, but like I said, I could have gotten out of it before getting the stock, or I could have just turned around and sold the stock immediately and gotten my money back. Um, so. It's it's certainly not without risk. It just depends on how you feel about the stock, what your uh, what your income is, and 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 all of that good stuff. So, um, yeah, if if that makes sense. Uh, Thanks. All, I gotta run now, but I appreciate that. I'm sorry. I said I have to run now, but I appreciate that. It was great, uh, great presentation. Sure. Thank yeah, you. you're you're most welcome. Uh, any other questions before I stop the sharing? I do. Do you think you would do a follow-up um, with all of this stuff come January so that we can just have like a part two? Uh, I can for sure. I um, uh, like just to see what happens with all this stuff now that you've you put this out there. Yeah, so I I do track it uh, obviously, and uh, so I was sort of bragging uh, about <laughs> the the ones that were expiring in November because they all expired oh. worthless. And I ended oh. up, I ended up pocketing, you know, two grand, basically okay. out of out of nothing just by virtue of being right. Uh, so uh, in two weeks, we can go with November then. <laughs> well, that's sort of the best case scenario, uh, assuming <laughs> okay. that I didn't actually want the stocks. Uh, you know, uh, for Danny that I took through this uh, last time, I did send him follow up, so I can certainly do that uh and and let you know uh obviously when you do this do a do it whatever works for you you know take parts of this process and uh you know just kind of do what what works for you um what what options traders do they actually want no part of the stock they will get out of it each and every time like several days before the expiry uh, and they'll pay out whatever they need to, and hopefully they're positive. Um, the other thing is they can, instead of just selling puts, they can uh, also buy a put further out of the money, further down, and that prevents catastrophes. It takes away from their profits, but it, it prevents kind of the infinite um infinite risk that i have because if the company goes bankrupt in the six weeks i still have to pay 
the whatever I promised, right? Even though the shares are worthless at that point. Uh, obviously, I'm doing this with companies that are hopefully not going to go bankrupt, but you you never know. So uh, this is really just uh, touching the the edge of you know scraping the surface of what you can do with options. This is super simple. And it sort of works for me as a long-term investor. I don't want to be an options trader, uh, but it, it sort of combines my long-term outlook and buy and hold. Uh, this concludes part two of the Put Selling Live video. I hope you found the session useful. If you have any requests on what you would like me to cover in future videos, please put that into the comment section. Please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and may you have a profitable day.